Okay, so Paul, I really want this to work. <laughs> so, is it impossible? I, yeah. Yeah, so I think we've probably given you the idea that interstellar travel is hard. A level of hard beyond anything we've covered in this course. Yeah, like it's a little bit of a dampener, but you know. But the curious thing is, while it's, while it's clearly not impossible. Yes, exactly. That's right. I mean, thousand year generation ships powered by strings of hydrogen bombs or maybe by giant lasers. They're expensive, they're slow, they're unattractive, but they are possible. That's right. And again, you give enough time. We're not talking about 10 years. You're talking about a thousand, 10,000 years even. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. And that actually gives us an interesting paradox. Okay. So let's say we wanted to colonize the galaxy. Yep. So here's a artist's impression of flying through the Milky Way galaxy at way past the speed of light, which yeah. you've just said is impossible. <laughs> we'll uh, that for now. Um, let's say we want to colonize the entire galaxy. How long would it take you? So let's say, let's, I mean, building a, a giant spacecraft that's yeah. for a generation is going to be very expensive. Yep. But the world's economy is growing at a few percent a year. So what's insanely expensive now will be uh, probably things teenagers buy out of their pocket money a thousand years from <laughs> and, now. And, and again, if you're really dedicated to the cause, maybe. Yeah. I mean, just imagine if you'd asked the medieval people to build an oil tanker. Yeah, exactly. How many blacksmiths would it take? It'd be impossible. But of yeah, course, yeah. nowadays, oil tankers come off yeah. a shipyard quite regularly. Quite regularly. Um, and they're not seen as particularly newsworthy or even expensive. <laughs> That's right. So in a thousand years from now, with technology as advanced as it will be then, That's um, right. it might be entirely feasible to build these things. And let's say there's motivation. I mean, yep. maybe people want to escape from the earth or whatever reason. They want to set up a new perfect society somewhere else. Yep. Um, there are probably going to be some people crazy enough to want to do this. I mean, there are people enough willing to go to Mars without any preparation or equipment, so yeah. yeah. And so let's say it takes a thousand years for them to get there, whether they're in suspended animation or their great 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 grandchildren exactly. arrive or their robot avatars, whatever it might be. Um, and then when they get there, how long is it going to take them to land on a planet and turn it into a technological civilization? A, a, I mean, a thousand years? I mean, we know that in the US, from the first European yes. settlement to the current situation, is only a few hundred years. That's right. In Australia, it's 200 years since the first European settlers arrived. Yep. Um, so, a thousand years to go from first people arriving to a technological society. I mean, we've done it before. Yeah, exactly. And then let's imagine after a thousand years, each of these new colonies sends out a whole bunch of new thousand year ships. So, essentially, we're going to repeat this process. Yes. Okay. So, we might send out 10 spacecraft to the 10 nearest planets. Yep. Each of them set up a colony, then each of those would send out 10, so now you've got 100 going out. Yeah, and then so on and so on and yep. so on. So you get the exponential growth as yeah. humans spread like a virus across the uh, uh, the galaxy. And again, not dramatically different than people going out on voyages and migrations on Earth, actually. That's right. Um, and we'll, we'll leave aside the whole issue of whether this is a yes. good or an ethical yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. This is not isn't. The, yeah, this isn't uh, the point right now. But let's imagine that we want to do this. And it's certainly possible. And at this speed, it would take about 10 million years to colonize the Milky Way galaxy. Right. That's actually not, I mean, to normal people, that sounds long. But to us, I mean, humanity, Homo sapiens and Homo erectus was, what, 2 million years ago? Something like yeah, that? I mean, the current Homo sapiens yeah. sapiens is about 100,000 years yep. old. But if you compare that to the age of the Milky Way, yeah, yeah. Uh, 10 billion years, that's a thousand times less. And if you compare that to even just the age of our solar system, right? That's a small, small. fraction. Yes. So in, in galactic timescales, this is a blink of an eye. Because, you know, I, mean, I like framing this, right? If we were to do this now, if we're committed to this cause, it would still take us way less time than the time it was to when the dinosaurs got wiped out in terms of universal time. So that's actually nothing on a planetary scale. On a galactic scale, yes. So, and, and that, that's the puzzle. Yeah. So we could do it. There's a lot of stars in the Milky Way. So why haven't? And let's imagine, we, we now know that most of them have planets. Yep. We don't know what fraction they're habitable, it's probably quite reasonable. And given there's enough stars... Even if it's 1% or 1 in a thousand, that's still planet. billions upon billions that's of habitable right. planets. We don't know what fraction of them have life forms on them. Okay. But if it's yeah, still 1 in a hundred, that means that in this image there are going to be thousands of life forms. That's right. And let's imagine these life forms evolve to intelligence like we did on Earth. Yep. And we don't know that. It might be they get to the level of slime molds and they're quite happy and they'll just stay there. But even if it's one in a thousand of those still do that, there's yep. still a lot that could. Yep. So it could well be that when you're looking at Grotthus, there's a lot of intelligent alien races out there. So if the Milky Way galaxy with its 100,000 million stars really has thousands or tens of thousands of intelligent life forms out there. Yep then 
surely one of them would have decided to spread. I mean, maybe ethically most of them decide, no, I'm quite happy where I am. I'm not going to try and colonize. I don't want to be a virus. But you know, if there are tens of thousands of them, surely you one of them... One, sure, one would be. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, they're going to have whatever religion or culture that means they want or, to spread like crazy. Or maybe they evolved around a star that's nearing the dying and they're going for their own, yeah. sacrificing their race. And so the issue is that a lot of those alien species on these stars would have evolved a long time ago. That's right. I mean, our galaxy is 10 billion years old. Um, let's say the star, that star, <laughs> um, formed a billion years before ours. So everything and, and, then shift. and then evolution worked at the same rate it did for us. So they reached our current peaks of technological expertise a million years ago. That's right. Or 100 million years ago, or 1,000 million years ago, because plenty of these stars here would be That's right. um, billions of years older than ours. So let's say that star's got started 2 billion years before us. Um, and it got to the point of intelligence, and they decided they wanted to spread. They'd have reached the Earth. Two billion, two billion minus ten million years ago. So one point nine nine million years ago. Two billion years ago. That's right. Um, and we'd be them. Because on Earth back then we just had microorganisms that couldn't even consume oxygen. So, so are you saying this is already happened and I'm an alien? Well, what it means is whatever it gets there first will spread across the galaxy long before anyone else has a time to evolve. So first in best stress. Yeah. So it's I mean it's like on Earth. Um, when humans arrived in remote continents like Australia, they found very strange life forms like kangaroos and wombats. <laughs> but, the, um, but they were not that strange. They still used DNA. Yep. They still breathed oxygen because they were part of the same genetic lineage. Okay. I mean, the marsupials in Australia split off everything else about 60 million years ago. But they're, they're related. I mean, okay. Eventually. I'm yeah. related to a kangaroo and a wombat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everything on Earth is related. And the reason why it's related is because it's much easier to spread around the world than to evolve from scratch. Yes. So it could be that new life forms are evolving from scratch behind your fridge. Yeah. Um, but if they evolve or now, my son's lunchbox. <laughs> but if they evolve now, they will be eaten by the things that already had a four billion year head start on them. That's right. Because the things that had a head start spread around the entire Earth long before number two had a chance to get going. Okay. So why doesn't the same work in the galaxy? You think whichever got there first, it only ten billion years could spread across the entire galaxy. But maybe they decided no, I don't want to spend a thousand years going generation ship. Yep. But by the time there's a few thousand civilizations, surely one of them would decide to do this. Yeah. And they'd spread all around. So you'd expect whoever got there first to have spread around the entire galaxy and would all be descendants of them. And essentially, because our star is kind of middle aged in respect to a lot of the other stars in the Milky Way, we wouldn't be one of the first ones. Well, we could be. Well, okay. I mean, we don't, really don't know how easy it is for life to get going. True. It could have been in the early Milky Way, there were too many explosions from gamma ray bursts and yep. things couldn't survive very long. Um, and you needed enough heavy elements to be formed. So maybe we're just in the right place, right time? So it could be we are first. Okay. Or one of the first few. Yep. Maybe there's a few other civilizations, but they're all Pacific things that decide they didn't want to spread and be co Or others. only have a thousand year head start or something like yep. that. So one option is that we are pretty alone. Okay. Um, as l any life or as intelligent life? Intelligent life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, slime mods are not going to build generation ships and travel between the stars. Yep. Um, so this is called the Fermi paradox because yeah. Enrico Fermi discussed it quite a lot. Yes. And it, why didn't they get here? Because the yeah. time to spread is much smaller than the time to evolve. Um, and there are possible one possibility is that we really are yeah. one of the few, maybe... It's much harder for life to get going than we think. Mm. Maybe that first chemical reaction that produces the first creature is just really hard. It's one in a million fluke, and so there are tons of suitable plants out there that none of them get started with life. And then I guess if, if it's a fluke to get started and maybe it's a fluke to evolve as well into intelligent life, you have... Yeah, or it could be that evolving to intelligence is not what happens. That's right. Maybe things stay as single-celled organisms. Maybe intelligence is an evolutionary dead end. We don't seem to be very good at looking after ourselves. That's true. Um, another possibility is that civilizations destroy themselves yes i mean we've come pretty close already quite a few times in That's the last right. hundred years you know are we really going to last 10 million years before destroying ourselves yeah this so, is actually elon musk's argument for colonizing mars that humans are going to destroy ourselves sooner or later we need to get off this planet before it happens yeah uh, but also he wants to detonate nuclear bombs on the poles of mars which creates other issues that we're not going to get into so i i guess, I guess the point is here it's a really hard question to tackle because if we start to figure out how to do this on Earth, then we should immediately be able to say, surely someone else has thought about this. We can't be the first. So why are we the first? Yeah. 
and we don't know the answer to it. It could be disappointed that all civilizations destroy themselves. Yeah. Or it could be they all discover a religious truth and uh, sit around right. contemplating their navels and seeing. Maybe they all go and upload their intelligence to AI, right? And then they're happy with where they are. But it's got to be a very effective way of stopping them colonizing things mm. for no one else to done, unless we really are alone. In which case, life on Earth is really precious. Yeah. If life is an incredibly rare fluke, we should really look after the one we've got here. I mean, even if it's not a fluke, we should look after it. But, you know, it's if we are a really interesting science experiment in the universe, I think that's quite an interesting outcome of all this, right? That, you know, as much as we can think about conquering space and traveling and going with all the stuff that we've talked about in this course, if we really are this rarity in the universe, that is something special. And that's probably a good point to end this course on. Thank you.